Welcome to our first ever Live 44 Live. Um, we have, it looks like about 53 people um, logged in joining us right now. 53 devices, maybe more people if you're watching with your family. Thank you for joining. Um, we're excited to be here with you and to learn alongside you as this is uh, your first time and our first time. Um, so an overview of the night, um, we got some announcement for you. Um, Jess and I are going to play games uh, with each other because the block is empty. Um, so we're going to have some games, a little message, um, and then we're going to give away some prizes at the end. For those of you who registered early, um, you have a chance to win some prizes. Um, so if you're only here for the prizes, you have to watch the whole thing yep. all the way to the end. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so announcements. Um, and this is, uh, some of you have heard this. Uh, you've seen it posted like 80 times now on Facebook or Instagram, or maybe you got an email um, or your parents got the email. But we do want to repeat them because it's a lot of new stuff. Everything we're doing is really different. And so we want to make sure we get that information out to you. Um, so first, we're doing a virtual Bible study. And it's very different than a normal Bible study because we're not meeting. Uh, we're not gathering together. And it's not, it's not um, limited to location or to time. Uh, and what I mean by that is you can go into the Bible study and you can, uh, you, can, you can put in your answers, type in your answers. And that could be at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And then the next day, Jay can go in there and he can respond to your answers. And uh, basically have like a week for people to interact with each other before we move on to the next study. So we started the first one this past Wednesday. And then next Wednesday, we're going to kind of move to week two. But in between, uh, so you still have a few days to go in there. You can see, I know. Nate Warner and John O'Keefe got in there right away. They've had some really good feedback, and um, I try to interact a little bit with them. There's, a, I think, already like about 20 people kind of in the, in the group, and, uh, but not everyone has responded. So I encourage you to, to join that. It's, the, it's a good study. It's a way not to just uh, study good content, but actually to engage with some peers. So a, little bit of the, a little taste of maybe what we're missing from the normal uh, Live 44, your normal small group. And this way, it's actually – all the grades, right? It's your adult volunteers are welcome to join that as well. In that same uh, program, uh, they ha are offering um, free daily devotions. Now, for some of you, you already have a, a Bible reading plan. You're, you're in God's Word. That might not be helpful for you. You might not want that, but that is available through that same, that same website. That, that we put a link out on Facebook, Instagram, email. If you didn't get that, um, email me or, or text me. Let me know. Uh, and so my email is Justin period mccoy at calvarybible.org uh, email the office there's a lot of different ways you can probably figure out just let us know we'll get you that information secondly we're doing a prayer time um, and again that's a part of every sunday morning both middle school high school and in live 44 we, we a small groups we pray together well since we're not together that idea of praying together is is, is gone um, in, unless we make time for it and so we're we're, we're scheduling the time 3 30 on thursday um, and last time it took about 30 minutes. So we're hoping that's a little bit memorable. 3.30 Thursday it kind of flows together. Um, it, you, can, you can come in late. You can leave early. It's, it's the nice thing about this is uh, it's technology is if you can't make it till 3.45, still join us. Again, in for, that's a Zoom call, the way that's structured. Um, it's a Zoom a meeting. So we can have up to 100 people. Uh, and uh, we're just praying. And honestly, everyone that, that came last time on this past Thursday, not everybody even – necessarily prayed in front of you. So if you want to participate, but you're like, I don't want to pray. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you guys okay? Uh, yeah, are you all right? All right. The stand isn't level, which is interesting. But, um, <laughs> which is like the key part of a, a stand to hold it this level. <laughs> but that's cool. Useful. So, um, but Dan is on it. Uh, and so on that prayer time, again, it's, it's going to be every 3.30 on Thursday. Uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, and so that's, uh, we encourage you, you don't need to register for that. You can just click the link um, and we'll, it'll take you there. Yeah. Um, there. We had some people that logged in, joined us while they were driving and just set their phone um, in the console or on their seat and they could hear the prayer request, hear the prayer while they're driving along. So really no matter where you are, you can join without any pressure to actually say anything, um, but you can listen in and, and fellowship with us that way. Yeah. We, and we would, um, yeah, it's just, we like, just want, we got to miss you. If anything, we just want to kind of see you and see how you're doing. So, um, and then, uh, well, yeah, actually I'm going to, uh, there's one more thing. Uh, we're doing something. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I want to give out a prize. I don't know what it is yet, but we are going to send out a document. It's going to be in our normal parent and student email. So if you're like, if you've never received an email from us, again, you'll want to let us know. But we're doing something called the quarantine bingo challenge, okay? Uh, and so it is, uh, it's like bingo where instead of us calling out a number and you, um, uh, 
and you, you know, you mark your sheet like normal <laughs> bingo. It's a task. All right. So I'm going to read some of them. Uh, and then basically if you can get five in a row, uh, and you have to prove it, you have to let us know, um, will you win and we'll give some type of, uh, um, a prize. So, um, the, uh, the, this, for the bingo challenge, I'll just give you like one. So, um, uh, bake, cook, uh, bake or cook a meal or, or grill something, take a picture of it, send it, um, and then, and then let us know how it turned out. So like, that would be, if you do that, right, you bake cookies or something, make dinner, um, prove that you did it. Right. Um, that's, that's, that's one box. And so then the next one might be like, do a puzzle and send in the picture, take a picture of an animal, uh, and, or animal tracks. I don't know where you guys live, you have animal tracks, but, um, play, play Frisbee golf, send in pictures of how you did, you know? So, just basically some tasks you can do if you have, if you're bored and just looking for things to, to stay busy or you really want to see what that prize is going to be. We'll send this to you and you can Are get working no, on it. There's no animal tracks near your house. <laughs> well, actually we have, we actually have deer, believe it or not. We're, yeah, we're close like, to people who have property. You made it um, sound like you have to live in the <clears throat> wilderness. No, I just, um, to see animal tracks. Uh, yeah. Um, all right. So, uh, anyway, I'm getting, uh, getting messages and I want to make sure right. we're, we're helpful. Um, yeah. Oh, nice. You guys are on top of it. Uh, um, you guys are responding as we're giving yeah. announcements. Thank you, Corinne and Daniel. Appreciate that. All right. So that's, that's quarantine bingo. We'll get you on those email lists if you're interested. Thanks for those who are already responding. Um, again, it's just something you can do with you, your friend. Uh, well, not your friends, but your family. So hopefully yeah. your family are your friends. Maybe. Not after a few days of quarantine, possibly. <laughs> Maybe not at this point. So just to recap real quick, if you're just joining us or joined late, um, if you want to be able to see what is on our TV behind us, um, if you can't read it through your video, but you have a secondary device, um, you can get this on your device through, we're using what's called Mentimeter. But what you do, um, go to menti.com, so M-E-N-T-I.com, um, on any secondary device that you have, and then type in the code five zero 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 two zero um and then that'll bring up on your device every slide that we have on here in this screen it'll help you um as we go through the game you'll be able to read the slides as we get to the lesson um it'll pop up on your screen for, just for easier use to see our whole powerpoint um so go ahead and do that if you want to join we're also going to have some interactive questions on here that you can use the app to respond to us live um and then we'll be able to see your responses on the screen so that should be pretty cool um, if we get to use that as well. Uh, a couple more announcements before we get into this game that I'm very much looking forward to. <laughs> I am not. Um, a little bit. Uh, the Rube Goldberg challenge. Yes. I challenged you all during our This Just End video last week to create a Rube Goldberg. You're at home. You got time on your hands um, sitting around. If you don't know what a Rube Goldberg is, go to our Facebook page, watch this week's This Just End video, or last week's, I guess. We explain it. There's a video of it. Create one, send it to us under two minutes long, video it, send it to us, and on Tuesday, we will judge which one we think is the coolest and the most creative, and we're also going to create our own uh, yes. here in the block, I believe, um, and we'll show you how creative we are, um, it, which might not be very creative. Be amazing. Probably I not. I'm going to do one with uh, Haddon on Monday. That's my goal oh. tomorrow, and um, if Hear he that. can hold his attention long <laughs> enough to do it, but we'll see. It might be a short one. Yeah, it'll, yeah. Um, so join that. And I also have the results. So we had 87 people join in the voting through our Instagram, Instagram stories. Um, the voting involved picking your favorite cereal. We're doing, um, a March morning madness and we're picking our favorite cereals out of, um, I believe there was, there's 16 total cereals, eight, divide that by two, eight cereals voting on the best. And we're going to have a champion in a few weeks. And then Justin and I are probably just going to eat a big bowl. Of that cereal. So, update with those Rice Krispies against Lucky Charms. Who do you think won? Um, I'm gonna go with uh, Lucky Charms. Absolutely, yeah. Lucky Charms with 68% to 32% Rice Krispies. Uh, Fruit Loops and Fruity Pebbles. I know you uh, already know who won. I, well, I would have gone with Fruity Pebbles. Yeah, this was a delicious. This was a surprise. Fruit Loops um, ran away with that one. 73% of you voted what? for Fruit Loops over Fruity Pebbles. That makes no sense. Um, Cinnamon Toast Crunch. And frosted mini wheats. <laughs> Cinnamon toast crunch. That Absolutely. Frosted mini wheats is a they. They're like the number sixteen seed in the real March Madness. They, they yeah. probably don't belong. I feel like they try to pretend to be healthy. Like half of them is healthy, but then you flip them over and it's they're just hard to eat. Nah, you have to have a lot of milk <laughs> uh, to really make them go down. Yes, uh, yeah. a lot of milk. Cinnamon toast crunch won seventy four percent to twenty six, and then 26. lastly, 
Yeah. I, I thought it would be like 90-10. But anyway, keep going. Frosted Flakes and Tricks. Mm. I would have gone with Frosted Flakes myself. But Yeah, Frosted Flakes, 77%. Not many Tricks fans out there. Um, so thanks for joining those. We'll keep posting those um, as we get winners. And then eventually we'll have a champion cereal um, yeah. in, a, in a few weeks. They will be crowned. Yeah. So now you guys get to enjoy watching us play a game um, that's called – Put it on a cracker. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so cracker. we are going to uh, – in a minute here um, – we're going to take turns, uh, and we're trying to think of, you know, kind of like the drive through IQ, if you watch that, where we're, uh, one of us will go, and then a slide will come up. You'll get to see what three items from the church, now that the church is not really used, the refrigerators are kind of just sitting with stuff in them. Uh, and so Tara, <laughs> our disgusting. admin assistant, kind of put together these crackers. There's three ingredients on there. And so we get to eat it, get to uh, eat it, and try to guess what three ingredients yeah. are on the cracker. Yeah. Um, Usually we get to make you all do this. I'm going to move this in case I throw up. Um, so I just want a little bit of distance. Um, so uh, we're going to, yeah, so the, we have our own blindfold. Uh, so Jake, are you going first then since you got yeah, your blindfold I was just ready? getting prepared. Okay. I'm trying to get it out of the way. Uh, and then basically whoever gets the most right wins out of the, we're each going to do two crackers, six gross ingredients. Well, if they're not gross ingredients. They're just gross together. Uh, and then uh, whoever gets the least, we're going to kind of just embarrass them a little bit because there's not really a point of giving each other prizes. So, the loser has to then do a Bible name spelling challenge, a, a, a spelling bee challenge with Bible names. And uh, chances are you'll, will, yeah. a little bit of humiliating to realize how hard, how, how, well, I'm assuming I'm going to fail at that if I lose this game. So uh, anyway, so we'll, we'll see. You're how that undefeated goes. in food challenges. Uh, yeah, I <laughs> so do far. tend to succeed when it comes to food. So, all right, uh, I'm going to pick right. a cracker. Um, all right. Oh, I have to pick it up. Um, so there's three ingredients. Oh yeah. Are you I'm feeding going me? To, no. Uh, I'm gonna. I don't really want to feed you, but. Um, yeah, me neither. <laughs> we're gonna go with number one here. Um, so I have to guess the three ingredients. <laughs> I should have looked at the ingredient list. Uh, so number one. Um, so that that slide is accurate. All right. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna open it. I'll let you open up. Open. Oh. I'll open. I'm just gonna go. We're gonna, we're gonna go. We're gonna go the whole thing. I want you to experience this. Oh. All right. All right. What three ingredients are on there? Oh, there's absolutely ketchup on there. Ketchup. All right. One for one. There's two other. There's pretty strong flavors on there. Oh, a pickle? <laughs> two for two. For two. Pickle coated in peanut butter? Three for three. You crushed that wow, one. That disgusting. is, um, wow, you said, you said a high bar. I, okay. So that was, yeah, that was a cracker with peanut butter, pickle, and ketchup. Three for three. Do I, I eat thought, three in a row? No, we only we only have to do two, but uh, then I'll go. It'll be a lot yeah, of pressure I if I don't get all these. Needs to settle down after that. Yeah. All right. Terry, you put a lot of all right. a lot of everything on that. Yeah. That was I gave you the cleanest one. Oh, how am I supposed to pick this up? Right. There's a fork. If you like oh, a fork. If I uh, fork is there a trash can nearby? I made um, sure that there was a trash can. If you want to like. I have a. Okay. Oh. I do well with quantity of food, but when it's like. Gross. I, I, I <laughs> if you throw up live, <laughs> just log out. Give me a second. It's coming. All right. Train's just, coming. All right. You ready? All right. Here you go. Don't buy so hard. <laughs> Give me the fork back. Oh, we need to switch slides to. Uh, there we go. This is what. This is what was on that one. <laughs> mm. They're saying you guys need to be wearing gloves. Oh, yeah. We'll just both. We washed our hands with interlaced fingers <laughs> for 20 <laughs> seconds while singing yeah. Happy Birthday. We the practiced the video. Uh, yeah, so, so there's here. mustard for sure. That pretty much was all yep. jelly. Yep. That's two of them. I don't want to have to get another one. <laughs> um, I, I don't, I don't, I, I have no idea. I'm going to guess uh, cheese. <laughs> No, <laughs> there's not cheese. <laughs> All right, what? Well, so it's actually mayo? Oh, oh mayo. That's, what that was. Oh. that's even worse. Oh, All right, you're in the lead. You're in the lead. Okay. You missed your substituted mayo for oh. cheese. Mustard, mayonnaise, and gel. We Ooh. don't have ranch in the building. You that's... made that way worse. There. All right, now you know. All right, uh, I'm not that was your see. mouth. Fork. <laughs> All right, um, that's probably the best thing to do. All right, so oh. uh, yeah, cover up. All right, so right now Jake's in the lead. Uh, three to two, and really we're both losing. I think. Really, oh, I feel like uh, 
All right. Um, I don't want to eat another one. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, the laugh does not give me gonna, confidence. Oh, it's, it's, I don't think I can pick it up. It's soggy. Um, <laughs> oh, oh Sarah prepared good. these a while ago, and uh, oh my God. it's uh, oh wow. Open up, nice and big. Uh, mm. <laughs> oh. That one is uh. So we had a substitute. Uh, yeah, I taste the substitute. Yeah, I shouldn't have said okay. that. I might have gave. I don't know. Oh. That was gross. Can you, can you taste anything? Is there anything on there recognizable? The only thing I can taste is garlic, 100% garlic. Was that, that only is, That garlic? is correct. We substituted relish because we thought we could we, – we just anticipated certain <laughs> things being in the fridge when we – Was it chunky garlic? Um, I, that, you would know oh. better than me. I did not eat any. Okay. Garlic. That's all You're, I tasted you, you was got garlic. four total now. There's two other ingredients on there. I can, I can smell it, garlic. That is potent. You could probably smell it through the live stream. Uh, garlic and cracker. <laughs> garlic and cracker. All right, so four. So I just I, I have honestly to, don't know. That was only garlic. That's okay. I have to get two out of three to even tie you. And then, that was uh, disgusting. I don't know what happens if we tie. I'll have to, what was with the garlic? A was there uh, applesauce on that? That is disgusting. Ooh. I do not recommend doing this. Um, uh, yeah, I don't recommend it either. <laughs> Dan's laughing like there's some funny here. comments in here. Uh, this is a uh, new fork. Don't worry. Oh, this will be over shortly. If you're wondering why, why am an I advantage, watching this right So now? an advantage is, of live stream for me is I didn't really, I didn't have to like use deodorant or brush my teeth before I came because no one's around. Um, <laughs> another advantage is you don't have to smell my garlic breath currently. Mm, I do. All right, here's Justin's <laughs> next one. Is it on um, a fork or am I? Am yeah. I, okay. It's on a fork. Don't worry. Open, yeah. There you go. Oh, oh, what's the next? I don't even know what this was because I couldn't even tell. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good one right there. That was nasty. That's so bad. <laughs> I hope you guys play this game tomorrow with your family. Ah, oh, that's so um, bad. Just, it's just definitely choose. chocolate syrup. Yeah. There's um, chocolate syrup on there. <laughs> mm. uh, Two more. I get water. I'm going to be out of water before we even get into the lesson. I'm trying to think of what like condiments would even be in the fridge. Um, I, I'm a, uh, the fridge in a youth room has. Was there, was there jelly? There's not jelly. <laughs> oh, no, I need to eat. There was not jelly. Um. There was chocolate syrup. I, I don't even, I don't think I can even name uh, hot sauce. Was it hot sauce? Oh, it was hot sauce. All right. Oh, so does that mean we're tied? I don't remember what the score was. I had four. You have four now. Yeah, we're tied. Was, if you get the third one. I got, I got guessed wrong though. Could I get another guess? Sure. Absolutely. I, I, it's a dairy product. Yeah. Was it dairy of some sort? Mm -hmm. Really? Are you serious? I mean. It was actually non-dairy, but yeah. Oh, non-dairy? Non coffee cream. It's supposed all to right. say coffee We're counting creamer. it. We're counting it. That's a win. Uh, that is a win. So that not only did I have to eat all that, publicly I lost. Shamed through spelling bee. All right. Don't challenge Justin. What, what, what was it then that was non-dairy dairy? Coffee creamer. Coffee creamer. You just can't see the cream. Oh, that is, that is disgusting. Okay. So um, I'm putting this blindfold back on. Word. All right, so yeah, he's, we're going to put some, some words, some, some common. Uh, so I get publicly common. shamed after eating that food. Yeah, we couldn't think of a good, like, prize, so really just a consequence. So you're going to, we're going to all laugh at you a little bit. Um, and as you try to, these are, these are names that, you know, usually we read the Bible um, silently in our heads when we're reading through <laughs> Scripture. So we don't always know even how to pronounce certain names, let alone spell them. Okay. Uh, and so these are some, some classic names. And uh, I'm going to give them to you, and we're going to see if you can, how, if you can spell them. Whereas really, that's... I got to spell names. Okay. You're going to see how, how, how far off. All right. That's, cool. that's basically, I'll say the name. You see if you can spell it. Okay? All right. I'll try. All right. What do we got first here? All right. So I'm going to give you... First off, we'll see if you can guess what the name is. So I'm going to read a verse here. Oh, no. Um, Shadrach, Meshach, and... To bed we go. To bed we go. Uh, <laughs> Abednego. <laughs> Abednego. Yeah. Replied to him, King, <laughs> King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. As a, okay. So awesome. you're right. It's, it's, a, it's Abednego. Um, how do you spell it? A B E D N A G O. 
And it, wrong, EG. All right, you're close. I thought the N went before the D. I thought it was like a bang. Wait, what did I spell wrong? Uh, it, it, you put it A instead of an E. All right, oh, uh, it's at the end there. So wrong. Let's see the next one. All right, we'll see. Okay, over one here. Uh, come on, Jake. <laughs> uh, when Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of. Come on. Now you're shaming me with like knowledge. Yeah, we're gonna. Dude. We're gonna. Yes. This is a bad look. I don't, I don't you know. know. All right. His well, child. the answer is I'm actually going to the slide comes up. Methuselah. <laughs> oh, you didn't yeah. know it either. Uh, Methuselah. All right. And so, how do you spell Methuselah, Jake? Um, M E T H U S A L E H. No. Oh. No. You just. I'm not going to explain why. You just got it wrong. All right. Now, next one. You're not going to explain why. No. Okay. You just. It was you, two letters were off. Um. All right. All right number. All right. So what? Um. What are you, mighty mountain, before blank? You will become level ground. Then he will bring out the capstone to shouts of God bless it, God bless it. Zachariah 4-7. I'm, so, I'm supposed seven. to know this. <laughs> that helps. It's Zachariah 4-7. No, that doesn't no, help. No, it's, it's actually, it's, the answer is Zerubbabel, I believe. Um, but I'm waiting for the slide to change. Zerubbabel? Yes. Uh, and so how do you, how do you spell? You're 0 for 2 here. Uh, Z E R. U, B A B E L. Oh man, it's two B's. B B B B. B, B. I had All right, had right. over three. You are you are failing this miserably. All because I I'm I got done. the creamer at the end here, and now it's you instead of me. All right, is there one more? No. All I right, think it's we'll, over. we'll do. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Abimelech had come to him from Grar with <laughs> blank, his personal advisor and. Uh, the commander of <laughs> it can't be right. Uh, the commander of his forces. I that's, can't spell it. That's Genesis read. 26. You're probably training yourself right now. Yeah, this is probably worse for me. Reading. I already don't know the answer. Uh, so it's it's a well. it's a who's it. Uh, it's, it's probably not the right way to say that. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> I think your pronunciations are throwing me off. A who's it? A who's a who's it? A who's it? All right, we're gonna go uh, with who, who is it? A H U S E T H. Say that one more time. A H U S E T H? No. Uh, who's it? It's kind of like Seth. I, I, I can see where you're going with that. And I see where I'm going. What is it? All right. That's got to be it. Yeah. It's a. Um, oh, there's one more. Well, we'll just. We'll just How do you spell a who's it? Um, a H U Z Z. Wow. Whatever. Yeah. You, you got zero correct. Um, I quit. That's, oh, there's one more, though. Uh, I quit. Sons of Benjamin, Bela, Gera, Nam, Naaman, Irosh. Huffam. Uh, Huffam and, and, and Ard. And uh, the actual, I could probably spell Ard. Yeah, that would uh, like Ard Park. Um, so the Muppam would have been the name. I, that, I don't recall that actually being in the Bible, but um, nobody's naming their kid that. Uh, you would have probably got that one right. So it's Maybe probably, you probably would have pronounced it Muppam <laughs> and then I would have had to spell it. Yeah, I wasn't helping you at all. Um, so there you go. That's, that's the consequence of losing. It's just. Um, a little bit of public embarrassment. That's yeah. that's all we got. So great. But uh, okay, so for real though, uh, we're we're kind of shifting at this point. We do want to dig into the word. Uh, we're gonna we're going to talk a little bit tonight about um, about suffering. We're going to talk about um, really what God's word has to say about it, and how as Christians we we just approach this uh, this topic. And so as we transition, um, kind of maybe a hard transition from. Um, Mm -hmm. tasting food to a spelling bee to actually getting into God's word. Uh, I do want to, for those of you that maybe came in a little bit late and didn't hear this announcement before, if you go to menti.com, that's M-E-N-T-I.com. Uh, if you go to it, if you, and now if you're, I realize if you just have one device, if you're watching on your phone, that's challenging. It's probably not, you're not able to do that. But if you are at like a laptop, desktop, pull out your phone, you can do this. Uh, it's a, a little box will come up. That's when you know you're in the right spot. M e n t i dot com. And you're gonna want to type in um, five zero 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 two zero. All right. And so if you put, type in those six digits five zero 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 two zero, that'll take you to uh, basically um, to our PowerPoint, right? So you, so you can kind of follow along with what what we're talking about. But also there's gonna be a few slides that you can answer questions, and your responses will come up on the screen. It lets Jake and I know that you're tracking with us, that there are actually people listening right now. Um, other, cause otherwise we're kind of just talking to a, you know, a, a phone really. Uh, so we, we want you to interact. We want to know what you're thinking. We want to know your thoughts as we're kind of going through this. So that's menti.com. Hopefully you're there. Um, you'll see the slides too, um, as well. Um, 
Yeah, we're actually going to start out with a question okay. too right yeah. away. Um, so if you guys jump in, hopefully some of you are logged in to menti.com right now. Um, the next question is going to be up on the screen too. Um, so hopefully you can join and answer the question. But we just want to know um, what two characteristics of God um, give you encouragement at this time. So on your other device, on Minty, uh, you should be able to have a couple entries of what characteristics of God um, give you encouragement during this time <laughs> as we sneak out the trash can. Um, so, so yeah, we'll I'm give gonna, you guys I'm a little try bit. try and do it myself here. I'm a little bit of time. Oh, there we go. All right. So as yeah. these are popping up, um, if, okay, you, if you all put the same responses or uh, the same word, that word will get bigger. Nice. Um, so it looks like love. He's getting a lot of feedback. Healer, steadfast. Yeah. Sovereignty. He is powerful. Nice, has a plan for me. We're getting a lot of variety here. A lot of see, them. it's probably yeah. so you probably can't even see it. A lot of you are coming up with such different things that love is kind of love and patience and sovereignty are are, are some some big nice, characters. All knowing. The thing is, if some people have similar ones but they're not exactly the same, it 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 makes a whole new thing. So. Wow. Cool. All right. So 35 different people were able to 38 uh, able to um, respond. That's that number is jumping on the side. Thank you guys for doing this. This is helpful. Um, yeah. If anything, I think this shows us that uh, you guys, there's a lot of different aspects of God that are coming to your mind, um, which is, which is encouraging to me that you're thinking about God's character. Yeah. That's cool. What would, what would two would you have come to mind? Uh, any- yeah. So for me, <laughs> Um, honestly, sovereignty, that one that's right in the middle, that God is in control, that he is in charge, that he's not surprised, that uh, nothing happened today that he didn't know about from eternity past, um, and that it's nothing, he's not surprised, and he's completely in control. And then also, I think, I, I think I would also say love, the two ones in the middle, that he's not only in control, but he's loving. If those two things aren't together, yeah. someone's loving and they have no control, that's, that's nice, but to be completely in control and care is, is awesome. You? Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, so I knew what this question was beforehand because I created this whole pow- um, presentation. Um, but the two that came to mind for me were all powerful and constant. Um, that's specifically because I've been going through Colossians um, in the middle school right now and teaching on Colossians. And Colossians 1, um, verses 16 and 17 says, All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Um, so it's cool right there. Like a lot of you guys said, all powerful um, there on the screen. It shows how powerful he is. He's the creator of all, everything. Um, but we also see how he is constant, um, his constant presence and the fact that he's currently holding all things together. It doesn't say that he did hold all things together or he will um, in the coming future hold all things together. It says he is holding all things together. It's current. It's constant. Um, so it's encouraging to know that God is in control through this situation um, that we're all going through right now. And he's constant. He He's not a creator and a God that created everything and then stepped out um, to let uh, us handle it for ourselves. He's constant and he's holding all things together. Um, so that's just encouraging to me, especially in this time where we feel um, powerless against um, this virus specifically. Um, we worship an all-powerful God. Amen. Um, yeah, so uh, with that, um, just kind of want to, transition here and just kind of in light of that um those attributes bring us to really the beginning of our our main main topic for tonight uh, because god is all powerful he's 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 completely in control and he's uh he's loving he's he's constant he he, he uh like colossians one is talking about he's he's been doing this for forever um the questions that come up from that right that that are have been coming that people have had for for probably as long as uh probably since the very beginning here, that how could he, God allow so much suffering in the world? How could he allow this virus to, to happen? How, how could he allow so many to get sick and, and die? Uh, so if he's in control, in other words, why, why, is, why is he allowing all of this and, and, and so on? So, so Jake and I are, are going to look specifically at that question tonight and, and how, how basically how could a good God allow evil and suffering, um, which includes certainly the suffering of, of diseases? Yeah. Yeah. So this question, um, it's going to be the topic, the title for this, this talk tonight. It seems to come up really consistently. Um, when, when people, um, are faced with trials, um, and tough times in life, I can't think at least in my lifetime of anything that's really affected, um, the world, but the U S specifically, um, I have to think all the way back to nine 11, 
really where our whole country was affected by something. Um, there was a lot of suffering um, in this, in our nation specifically, and we're going through that now as a country. Um, so my prayer as we talk through this um, and look at this question is that um, we aren't a only able to answer this question for you, but we're able to equip you all to answer the question for others that you talk to who might be questioning this very same thing. Um, how could a good God, how could the God that we worship as Christians and believers allow what is happening right now? Um, so we're going to dive into that question today. Um, so that question, how could a good God allow evil and suffering, um, that poses something known in kind of the apologetical world as a trilemma. Um, so there's three kind of points in that question, within that question, which is um, God is all powerful. God is all loving, yet ev evil exists. So how can those three, those three points coexist? How can God be all powerful, all loving, and allow evil? Um, because people don't want to believe that a God who's all powerful would allow evil and suffering. Um, and they don't think that a God is, who is loving would allow evil and suffering. Therefore, since evil and suffering exists, God either A, doesn't exist or isn't good. Um, that's the trilemma there in that situation. Um, so I think there's a slide that actually breaks those down as well. Um, so we're going to talk about how those can be true because we know, we know God's all powerful. We believe that. We know God is a loving God. Um, clearly we believe that that was real big on, um, the characteristics you guys said, and we know evil and suffering exists. So we know all three of those to be true. How can they, um, coexist with each other? So with all these things we don't know right now with the coronavirus, I was, I feel like there's a lot of things we feel like we don't know every day. We learn new information. Um, and a lot of it is we just don't know right now. We're waiting to see um, the quarantine is hopefully going to stop this whole process, but we don't really know what's going to happen. I wanted to talk about five things we do know, um, five things we know for sure. So one is that we know God created the earth perfect with no evil and suffering. Um, two, we know that God created us with a free will. Three, we know that every single one of us has rebelled against him. Four, we know that God uses suffering for his glory. And five, we know that the suffering in this life will end. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit how we as believers know these things and then how unbelievers um, or people who haven't given their life to the Lord can learn these things and understand them as well. So first, first we're going to talk about how we know that God created the earth perfect with no evil and suffering. Basically, just Genesis. Genesis 1.31 says, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. I love that part, Jay, because I think um, uh, if, I, if I remember correctly, and you guys can fact check this uh, and even probably message in and let me know if I'm getting this wrong. Um, up until this point, he just said it, it, it was good. And at this point, he actually says very good. He's getting, he's getting to the end of, of, of creation in general. And, and there's just, uh, I mean, not that good isn't sufficient enough, but, but very good. God is, is um, he created it perfect and he was pleased with it um, before, uh, before sin entered into the world. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So he sees, he sees that everything is very good in the beginning. So you might be like, well, if everything was very good, uh, what happened? Because it's not anymore. Um, well, that's number two. So the second thing we know for sure is we know that God created us with a free will. Um, we see that in verses in Genesis 2 um, in the garden where um, the Lord basically gives Adam and Eve the free will to, to eat of the fruit of the garden because he tells them what trees not to eat from, which shows us that they had a choice. They had a choice of the trees that they were going to eat from, um, and we know what they chose in the end. We see Joshua 24, 15 um, says, And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve. So that right there shows us our free will, our ability to choose whether we're going to serve the Lord or whether we're going to serve ourselves um, and our own selfish desires. Um, so, like I said, God created the earth very good and perfect, but he also created us with free will. And that, that free will um, that we have is what made evil possible. Um, and then our rebellion against God is what made it actual. So people will ask, well, God created everything, um, and evil and suffering exists. Does that mean God created evil? Does that mean God created this to the happen? No. But in the blessing of giving us free will and creating us with free will, that made evil possible. That allowed for the possibility of evil what made evil actual, what made evil and suffering today exist 
is our rebellion against God. We're the ones that made that evil possible through our rebellion against God. Um, so that might make you ask, if God is all-knowing, right? He would have known we were going to rebel. He would have known this was going to happen. He's all-knowing. He knows everything. Why would he give us free will if, we knew, if he knew we were going to mess it up and rebel against him? Um, so I really like how C.S. Lewis answers this question. Um, he says, because free will, though it makes evil possible, is also the only thing that makes possible any love or goodness or joy worth having. A world of automata, of creatures that worked like machines, would hardly be worth creating. Um, that, you know, <clears throat> when, I, when I read that, I think of, um, I think of my own kids and how, uh, how much joy it brings me when they, when they come up and they give me a hug and they tell me they love me. And I, I know that they've, I've not forced that. Um, I know that I've not made them do that. They, they obviously there are some days where they don't respond that way. And so when that's a chosen uh, affection, uh, it's, it's, it's real. And I think, uh, it's a little bit what C.S. Lewis is talking about that, like it, that choice is what makes it so special that they, they, they don't have to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Someone, um, that makes me think of just my, my relationship, um, in my marriage, um, marrying someone that is forced to love you doesn't nearly have the joy and effect as someone who chooses to say, I do, um, rather than not having that choice at all. And that's what, that's what God desires. God desires our choice to love him. That's why he enabled us with this free will. Um, all while knowing we are going to mess it up many times over. Um, um, so this free will that enables us to either rebel against the Lord or serve the Lord, um, that lasts all the way to the point that we die. Um, and then at that moment, whatever you've chosen in this life, whether you've chosen to follow yourself um, and your own desires or to serve the Lord, um, we'll be held accountable for that at the point um, that we die in eternity. And where, we will be, where we'll be spending eternity will be reflected by that choice um, through our free will. So that's number two, the second thing that we can know. We know that God created us with a free will. And because of that, number three, we know that every single one of us has rebelled against God in some way through our free will. Um, and we know that the consequences of that rebellion is suffering, as we see right now in the world. So some verses um, <clears throat> that point to that in Scripture, how we can know that from Scripture. Romans 5.12, um, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, this is the important part, because all sinned. Mm -hmm. Every single one of us, with our free will, have chosen to rebel against God. And as the result of that, we deserve the suffering and the punishment eternally, um, as Romans 6, 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So the next two points are going to touch on that hope, um, that free gift of hope. We're going to have some encouragement. I know this sounds rough at the end. It's basically saying everything was perfect and then we messed it all up and now we're going to suffer for it. But there is hope. That's the, that's the message of the gospel. The good news is the hope um, at the end of our suffering. Um, so yeah, so we actually have another question for you to join in on at this point. Yeah, and so just to, just to recap for a second, I think if, if, you've, if you're one of the high school students that have gone to either Chicago or LA, and, or maybe you're prepping still to go for, for DC, and you've, you've come across that gospel acronym, um, um, basically, and, and a different words, and different, you know, Jake's worded it differently, but essentially that G of that is God created us to be with him, that God designed us and it was originally perfect without flaw mm -hmm. and then the yeah. and our sin separate us from god and that sin um um we it was our choice it was, it was by free will and that sin creates separation and so even just thinking through thinking through the gospel as a whole um really understanding suffering is uh, this is some of the key ingredients of understanding the gospel is understanding the really the heart of um how we are to approach suffering. Yeah. But, but here's the question uh, we want to ask you here. We're going to put it up on the screen. If you're still using the, the app, hopefully you're, yeah. you're still, uh, it's still open. That's, again, that's menti.com 50020. The question is examples in scripture of suffering being used for God's glory. So we're going to, we're going to kind of test your Bible knowledge here. Um, and, uh, what, what, what examples can you think of in the Bible where um, 40? <laughs> I don't know if that's what is uh, meant. Uh, okay, there you go. Okay, so we have uh, um, Job, uh, Jesus, Israel. Job again. Job upsets. Paul's um, imprisonment. It's worded a little different, so it, it comes up. But Paul's in prison. That's good. Abraham. Noah. Wow, there's a yeah. lot. Um, Paul in prison. 
yeah. crucifixion Saul's blindness, blindness yeah, yeah. Um, the crucifixion Joseph man they just yeah. keep coming That's some good uh, job job is a job is getting definitely a lot of getting right the yeah, uh, it's memorable the center that's a, probably the most so it's a very large book uh, with that being the central theme yeah, yeah. Um, Jesus obviously um, definitely and Paul that's awesome. It's awesome to see how quickly we can think of. Um, it's pretty easy to think of suffering. Um, it comes to mind. We can probably pretty quickly pull times in our life where we've suffered or struggled or things have been tough. Um, but it's awesome to see how quickly we can not only think of that, but we can see times that that suffering has been turned into um, a, and used for glorifying God um, and point towards the glory of God. So the two that I thought about, obviously, Job as well and join it in with the rest of you um, pretty obvious one um, in scripture that we refer to a lot and then also um, Christ right the greatest um, the greatest point of suffering that we read in scripture Christ's Christ's sacrifice on the cross for us and then um, the clear evidence of how that brings glory to the Lord by providing an avenue for a relationship with him um, for us to have a relationship with him um, through that suffering because of that suffering is the only way that we are able to have that relationship um, and see the glory of God through Christ's death on the cross for us. Um, and then also kind of a different one that I actually um, found as I was just studying for this lesson and looking through scripture um, specifically was the blind man in John nine, John nine verses um, one through three. This is Jesus is walking with his disciples here. And he says, it says, as he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned this man or his parents that he was born blind? Jesus answered, it was not this man sin or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. Um, mm -hmm. So Jesus clearly telling the disciples the reason for this man's blindness, the reason for his current suffering um, wasn't directly related to his personal sin or his parents' personal sin, which we, we um, see a lot of people who believe that, that if you're sick, if someone has cancer, if they have some kind of illness, it's because of their specific lack of faith or their sin issues. And we see here in scripture that that's not necessarily true. Um, it wasn't because of his sin or his parents, but it was so that the glory of God could be displayed. Um, and Jesus teaches that to his mm -hmm. disciples, um, which we can look at as well for hope. Um, and, a, and a little bit of an understanding of suffering and how it's used to display God's glory. Um, so that's number four. The fourth thing that we can know as, um, as Christians, we can know that God uses suffering for his glory and our growth. Um, and then as unbelievers, suffering um, in this world lets you know that something is wrong. Suffering mm -hmm. points towards the need for a cure. Mm -hmm. Suffering points towards the need for something to be fixed. Um, so we're going to touch on both of those. Um, as we go through this. Um, so back to the trilemma, I think all the way back kind of the beginning of the talk, the trilemma, God's all powerful. God is loving yet evil exists. And people will argue uh, many times that those three can't all be true. Therefore they'll argue, they'll will, they will argue against the fact that there is a God or against the fact that he's all powerful and loving. But I'll take the other side of that argument and say that, um, evil and suffering does not prove that there's no good God. It actually does the opposite and points us towards God himself. The fact that there is the existence of evil and suffering actually points us towards God rather than away. So two reasons for that. Um, first is the idea that we wouldn't even comprehend evil and suffering if we didn't first have an idea of what perfection would be, hmm. right? So we, can't even, we wouldn't even have an understanding that there is such things as evil and suffering, which I think we all agree there is. We can clearly see that. We wouldn't have that understanding without having some innate measurement, <clears throat> excuse me, of what the standard of perfection is. And that itself is an argument for a creator, a designer, a perfect God who put in that standard of perfection um, into us as he created us. Um, some ways to kind of explain that if you're not tracking completely is that you wouldn't know that a line, you wouldn't know a line is crooked unless you had an idea of what a straight line looked like. You'd have nothing to compare it to unless you knew this is a straight line, that line is crooked. Um, similarly, you wouldn't know it was dark um, if you never could see. You wouldn't have, dark wouldn't even be a word with meaning because you wouldn't even know. But because we have light, we know, we understand darkness. Because we see what light is, we understand darkness. Um, 
So that's how suffering points towards the perfection of God because we understand suffering and evil is not perfect. We see the imperfections in our world and that should point us to a perfect God who's given us the understanding for that measurement. That actually um, that makes me think of a book I, I read years ago and I, I don't know if it'd be a good read for you. I, I can't remember how, how high of a level it was, but it was called Stealing from God uh, and it was by uh, an apologetics uh, guy named Frank Turek, I believe, who basically said most of most of the atheist arguments um they need god to make their argument and uh kind of what you're saying like to, to say that there's something wrong with the world you well, you need a you need to believe that there's something that's right you need to believe that there's that there's a way that it should be and so that, that to actually argue that the world's too bad for there can't be a god well you need god to to be, even believe the world's bad so yeah again that, yeah. that if you're looking to study that more i think um uh, I recommend um, stealing from God. Uh, I believe I believe that's Frank Turek. Uh, Absolutely, as you were talking, that just kind of took me back oh, to yeah. when I read that. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so not only does suffering and evil point us towards God, um, it points us towards our need for Him. It points us towards the fact that there is something wrong. Um, that this this world is not perfect. I don't think anyone's going to argue with you that our world is not perfect. Um, and so this evil and suffering points us towards our need for a cure. Um, through Christ. So an example of that, um, I heard a story about a girl. Um, her mom was telling about a girl who had um, this thing called SIPA, which is uh, basically insensitivity to pain. Her, her daughter wasn't able to feel pain. Um, she, she had no feelings of pain. Um, she could put her hand on a hot stove, not feel it burning her, not understand. And the mother said that she prayed every night that her daughter would start to feel pain again. Now I know right off the bat, you're like not feeling pain. That sounds awesome. A life without physical pain sounds great. But the side effects from that, the, the issues that that caused, the problems that that caused were innumerable because there was a lack of pain. Um, the example, like she could be out playing in the field, step on a nail, not even know it, keep playing around, keep living that way and foot get infected have to get amputated because there was no signals of pain to tell her something is wrong. It's like leper six. It yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Um, so the idea that her mom was praying so much for her daughter to feel this pain, to give her a sign that something is wrong in this world. Um, that's sin. That's, that's evil in this world. Something is wrong. It should point us to the understanding that something is wrong. There should be a cure. Um, there should be something to fix that, which is Christ. Um, Christ is the cure to fix that, which brings us um, to the fifth point, um, the fifth thing that we can know, we can know that this suffering and this life will end. Um, and we can know that if we are followers of Christ, um, as unbelievers, you can join into this. You can join into this hope simply by becoming a follower of Christ, by putting your trust in him, by making him the Lord and savior of your life, all the way back to the free will, right? You have the ability to choose right now while you're still alive. You have that ability to choose to serve yourself or serve the Lord. If you choose to serve the Lord, to give your life to him, um, through Christ's sacrifice on the cross, you can be encouraged with the fact that this suffering and this life will end. So we started with some encouragement. You guys posted encouraging attributes of God through this time um, that you see. We're going to end with encouragement as well. I felt like we needed to double up on encouragement right now with the way um, things are going. Encouragement is in short supply. It right is. Now. It kind is in short supply. Kind of like toilet paper. <laughs> kind of like toilet paper. Nice. So we're trying to overload you with some encouragement right now. So encouragement, um, as we know this suffering will end. Um, but this encouragement and peace, it can only come when we change our thoughts and our minds to have an eternal perspective. It's hard to be encouraged looking towards tomorrow or next week and looking to how long is this quarantine going to last? How long am I going to be stuck in our, our houses? Yeah, live 44. Perfect. We're here to live for forever. Um, so that encouragement, that peace, that can only come if we change our perspective from this life, this world to a perspective, to an eternal perspective. Um, because we're not promised, we're not pr promised relief from suffering in this life. Nowhere in scripture does it say that this life is going to be easy, that you're going to be prosperous, um, that things are going to be okay. But we are promised that there will be um, basically rejoicing and encouragement if we have an eternal perspective as believers. So Romans 5 verses 1 through 4, I'm going to read that to you. Um, it explains this. It shows us in scripture how we can know that this suffering in this life will end. So Romans chapter five, verses one through four. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. 
Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. So that hope, it says we can rejoice in hope of the glory of God. That hope, speaking to believers, um, Paul's talking to believers right here, that hope isn't, isn't like seniors hope they get to walk at their graduation right now. This isn't um, maybe the seniors are hoping they get to go to prom or um, this isn't that type of hope that you hope something this will happen. This is a hope that it is going to happen and now you can have hope in it. Um, this isn't like a cross your fingers wish for um, to be able to rejoice in eternity. This is Paul saying, this is going to happen. This is going to be what happens for believers in eternity. So rest in that hope because it is a for sure thing um, that we are promised as believers um, that we will have that, that assurance um, that we will be able to rejoice in the hope of the glory of God and that these sufferings, um, rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that that suffering will in the end produce hope of eternity with the Lord. Um, so in closing, before I kind of hand it over to Justin and have you guys join in with us one more time, um, is a quote from John MacArthur that kind of just wraps up this whole idea of suffering perspective, um, the hope that we can have as Christians and what the makeup of that is. So he, he puts it like this. The change of values given with the new heart lifts one eyes past the evils of this life to the God who will finally end evil and is even now using it for his purpose. So again, in closing, I just, I challenge you guys have an eternal perspective. Um, having an eternal perspective is the only thing that brings hope and peace and encouragement in times of suffering, lifting our eyes past this life to the Lord who's in control of it all and is using it all for his glory. Awesome. Well, that, that is uh, such a good reminder. It's one of those, um, we get so caught up uh, in, in the, the day-to-day, uh, in, in this kind of in what's next. In, in, I remember when I was in high school, um, I, uh, I told my, I think I had a conversation with my dad. I'm like, I'm not really afraid of dying. I just want to be able to get my license first. Like that was like <laughs> in my mind, like I didn't care about anything else. I just wanted, and, and really as life has gone on, there's just always been like that next thing. Like, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't you know, as, as long as I can wait, I want to, graduate from college and like, oh, I really want, I want to get married. And then there's, we get so caught up in, 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 in the earth, right. And, and there's, it's good and their gifts and it's wonderful, but God does call us to have an eternal perspective and to, to live for forever, to live with eternity in mind and to, um, I think it, that becomes especially important during times like, like right now when uh-huh. we're, when we're thinking through, I don't know how many days we're going to be trapped in our houses and, and whether you're going to walk for commencement or, you know, those kind of things and what school is going to be like. Uh, we, we need to kind of pull back a little bit and think of God's eternal purposes. Yeah. So I feel that we're all hoping for the day that this, this quarantine lifts for the day that we're in the clear and we see the, the count of the virus and the, the infected go down. Um, but we should, as much as we're hoping for that, we should be hoping for the, for the end um, to rejoice in glory with the Lord, hoping for eternity just as much as we're hoping for this. And they, sh- they should be, they shouldn't even be equal. We should be hoping for eternity much more. Um, and so changing our perspective of that, that's good. Yeah. I mean, just want to be more excited to gather with y'all in heaven <laughs> than I am for us to get back here in the block. And yes. I'm excited. Which for, we're excited for. We're excited for, but like, empty I, but really right the end goal, right? What we really want to long for is worshiping together in heaven. So, uh, so we have a, a final question that we want to get your feedback and this is not a, the word cloud. This is, we want to, um, at least I don't think uh, this is where no, we're, yeah. we're going to get a list here because we hope that not only we want to get your feedback, but we want to read off some of these. And if you have a pen and paper or you're able to jump from streaming to this website to take notes of some sort, I would encourage you to, to get some of these, these down. What verses or verse or verses give you the most hope during this difficult time? So some of you, my guess is each individual student or those listening. Um, yeah. Psalm 118, 24. I'm not even sure offhand what verse that is. So I'm encouraged that yeah. we, we can actually say these results and hopefully I think we can, might be able to send it out to those who are streaming in, but Psalm 118, 24, Jeremiah 29, 11, Romans 8, 20 is that um, all things work, work together, together for the good of those who um, love God and are called yeah. according. Um, John three awesome. sixteen. for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Uh, John three sixteen twice. John 1, 9, or yeah. Joshua 1, 9 is what, be strong and courageous. Uh, yeah, uh, it scrolls down. I don't know. If, I don't know if is that even possible from where you're yeah, at. You yeah, you should thanks. be able to. Wow, there's so many. Uh, Romans, that. that's uh, awesome. John sixteen thirty three, Proverbs nineteen twenty three, yeah. Psalm twenty three, right? The um, 
I have told you these things so that oh, you just typed it out. In nice. me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Amen. That's Amen. Awesome. That's a good one. Thanks for thanks for writing that in there. Actually, yeah. that, that helps. Uh, Proverbs three, five, and six is that um for my. Uh, no, that's Isaiah. Um, that, oh, that's a, that's a okay, common that's memory verse, and I can't draw a blank. My, my um, Bible sword. Uh, Proverbs three, five. It's hard um, to think. Well, I'm I know keep, people think, are watching. Yeah, yeah. I proved uh, that with the blindfold uh, on earlier. Yeah, um, mine were blank. Psalm 103. I would encourage you, Philippians 4, 6, and 7. I know that's the do not be anxious in anything. Um, and I wish I yeah. could remember Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. I'm, uh, anyway, uh, so I would encourage you, uh, if you heard me rattle them off, if you can see the, the screen, um, yeah. just meditate on these things. I, I know for different people, there's different degrees of, of concern, anxiety, worry, stress. Uh, maybe you're feeling some of your parents' stress if their jobs are in limbo right now and you know, stress can kind of be contagious in that way, like in your round stressed out people and uh, you can absorb that a little bit. And so you have a chance to maybe, maybe you're not feeling it as much because you're, you're young and this doesn't, um, it's not impacting you the same way. You can use these verses to encourage your parents, give them some hope, uh, an opportunity to minister to them in this time where they might be feeling it a little bit more than even you are. Um, but yeah, so we'll try and too. Um, this is our first time again with this presentation platform, but we'll try and post these as well if we're able to. Because um, I wanted to use this. The reason I put this question at the end, I wanted, again, encouragement. I wanted to use this as a time we're not able to fellowship in person, um, but you guys are able to all put verses that encourage you. Um, and then other people can look those up, like we said, and, and gain encouragement from you that way. So just a little bit through the technology that we have to be able to fellowship as believers um, and encourage one another in the, in the simple ways that we can right now until we can again, be face-to-face -face and relational. Um, so we'll work on that this week, and hopefully we're able to do it um, for you all. Awesome. Well, um, as we're getting ready to uh, to wrap things up, we do want to give away some, you go. some prizes before you go. So you, thanks stayed, for, you stayed this long. Yeah, we have, according to, um, to kind of the way this is done, we had 78 devices or 78 uh, that, that registered. registered. And so some of those are like three people, some of you have families, and so – I'm pretty excited about the. So if the, your sibling wins this, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so some of you, it's like like the nun family or the Morell yeah. family. Like you get to uh, choose. You get to pick who, who gets, gets it, right? So gets which we appreciate. I mean, that that actually leaves room for other people by doing it as a family. So, so are we gonna do the first spin for? Um, oh yeah, why well, have? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, we have a number. High commodity. Of, you know, the, things the are the worth of wet wipes. I've right been now. to the store several times. Has to have gone up. We have. Um, Kleenex brand. I mean, these are quality wet wipes, right? Um, and I don't know if they're brand. flushable, but uh, wipe, <laughs> that's what came to mind. Hands, face, and body. He saw I, wet wipes and wondered if they were flushable. Uh, well, let's be honest. That's what people are wondering right now. They're, I wasn't wondering. Oh, yeah. people. You, I'm. I, other people are. Um, all right. So they are alcohol free. So I feel like we're not. Uh, as Justin reads the small little print on the back of these wet wipes, we'll, got, spin, we'll spin the Pick Me app. Everyone who registered early, um, their name is in this. So, again, will they have to register again next week? Uh, yeah, the way we're doing it, and yeah. what that does is that allows us to, um, one, it's kind of keep, get you an idea of who's actually tuning in because we want to know who we're missing, too. right? We want to be able to reach out to people who aren't are missing this. But um, it also allows us to do this app. And some so. incentive to register next week um, if you're not in this list. So. Winner of the Kleenex wet wipes. These are just, just oh, ten. What we'll do? You mentioned them. the Nun family. All right. Well, it we're wasn't rigged. We're gonna no send good. you. Um, Look at all these wet wipes. We're gonna send you. Get. How many? Oh, they got, they got quite them. a few. We're gonna we're gonna we'll give they them twelve wet wipes. We're gonna send you twelve Quincy. Kleenex wet wipes. I don't know how many. Some for everyone. Yeah, he's Today. well. He's a paint. I mean, you gotta get that paint <laughs> off. And, That's true. Um. Yeah. So we're doing another spin for the rest of the. Let's let's do the rest of whatever we have left here. For the rest of the wet wipes. If you were sad that you missed out on the wet wipes, you get another right. shot. If you don't see your name up there, it's probably because you registered late. We had to yeah. we had to kind of finish this sorry. up about an hour beforehand. So we were missing a few of you. Just you're not in it. I'm sorry. But Sarah Weiss. All right. Nice. You and the rest of the Weiss family. <laughs> if you want to ben, share. Uh, if you he might, you know, he might think, hey, you he, needs share. It. he might need it. Um, so those are some what we have uh all right. There's some other stuff too. Yeah, we have. So I went recently went to a uh, like a mini conference and Word of Life was there and they gave me some uh, some some one year 
interactive devotionals, right? And so we have two yeah. different types. Um, again, uh, you may or may not want this, or, or maybe you have a plan, but you can give to yeah. somebody who doesn't. So, yeah. um, but we'll send, we'll mail this out to you. So let's see here. We got two and of these. You might be sitting at home really wanting something to do yeah. um, throughout your day. So word of Mary Stowe. Ooh. All right. So we'll send you. Uh, we'll send you this one here. That yeah. this is. Uh, they're both. They're they're both the same idea, but they're a little bit different. So this yeah. is a interactive one year daily devotions from word of life. Awesome. Um, Mary. $22 value. Actually. They're not, they're not cheap. So yeah. there you go. All right. So the second one year devotional goes to Catherine, Catherine Kenny. Kenny. All right. Awesome. Thanks for Catherine. tuning in. If we find out you didn't actually watch this though, uh, <laughs> we don't ask us where your we, prize we, is. I don't know how we would know that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we're going to send it to you either way. So that should be coming in to you sometime this week. Hopefully you'll have them by the time we meet again next Sunday night. So, um, we have one more. Let's oh, well, so that, that, uh, so that was, I'm, I'm thinking about a, a $10 Starbucks gift card for the winner of the bingo. Oh, that was what I was thinking. Bingo. However, if, awesome. you, if you don't like coffee, I, uh, I would be happy to get another, if you do this and you win and you're the first one to send us the evidence, uh, I'd be happy to get a $10 gift card to a, uh, a reasonably to a place of your choice. That's like, in Kalamazoo so we can actually <laughs> get it some you know that's so you don't have to drive three hours to pick up a gift yeah and hopefully it's not out of business by the time uh, you finish yeah, your definitely. contest all right so uh, well um I'll tell you what I'll pray us out thank and you. then uh, thank you for, for being with us thank you for being with us let me pray but for no. you and uh and then we'll see you hopefully on on Thursday the prayer time let's pray God thank you so much uh thank you for technology that allows us to get together to meet, to have a little fun, laugh a little bit, and to be able to study your word and, and even interact um, and ask questions and get some feedback from, from students in a time where we are, where social distancing is not just um, required, but it, it's, it's helpful and it's kind. And so we can continue to be loving and kind and considerate of, of others and yet still in a way be together. We thank you for that. We thank you, God, that you are in control. We thank you that you're loving. Uh, even though evil exists, Lord, that it will not last forever. Uh, and I pray that those listening have a relationship with you and one day we'll spend eternity with you. Um, and uh, Lord, uh, again, thank you for this time together. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.